If you couldn't tell by the title of this video, I will be talking about <laughs> boobies. <laughs> Cutting off of boobies. There's a surgery that transgender people and non-binary people are able to get. The surgery is a gender confirming surgery. So meaning if your gender has changed from whatever you were assigned at birth, then you're able to get a surgery like this. This surgery that I'm talking about is called top surgery. And top surgery is pretty much removing the breast tissue. I'm going to be talking about how you go about doing that, how I was able to do it and only pay $15 how my pre-op was, how the surgery was, and the post-op. I took a lot of pictures between today and March because I wanted to be able to document and show people exactly how I healed and what it looked like to begin with. And it was honestly like just a warning. Viewer discretion is advised because these pictures get really like gross. Most of the pictures are a lot of bruises, crusty blood. There are pictures of actual blood. It's not like the easiest video to watch if you don't like seeing shit like that. So just fair warning. Two years ago was when I decided that I wanted to do it. And the more I researched searched it the more confident in the fact that I wanted to get this surgery and I wanted to know how so I started doing a bunch of research I watched a bunch of YouTube videos I learned a lot about the price the price of top surgery is pretty fucking expensive it goes up to like 10k like I, at least six thousand dollars but to the maximum that I have heard of is ten thousand just keep that in mind I highly advise whatever insurance you have you call them you never know what their terms or policies are on the surgery or even if they offer it for your insurance plan that's my first tip please call so once you get that information on how much it is if it's covered then you go from there I have Kaiser if you have Kaiser call them and ask because they offer it I don't know much about the details of which insurance plan I had but for me I called them and I was like I'm interested in getting my boobs cut off and she was like what and then I was like I would like to get top surgery and she was like oh okay and she tells me okay it's gonna be zero dollars if you have to stay overnight fifteen dollars if you don't and I was like are you fucking serious I hung up and I started fucking crying and the next day I make an appointment with my primary care physician because that's where you have to go first because she has to refer you to the uh, transgender clinic I go to her and I tell her and she was like all right she sent a referral to the plastic surgery department it's gonna take like probably like six to eight weeks so be patient so then the next day I call my psychiatrist and I tell him like what do I need to do? Because all the research that I did, it told me that I needed to go through like an extensive amount of psychological evaluation to make sure that I was making an honest, rash decision. The next appointment was going to an orientation and that orientation was pretty much just probably like a group of like six trans people, non-binary people. He was giving us a PowerPoint on what procedures Kaiser offers. So for each procedure, it's different. Some of them ask that you need to be a year on hormone replacement therapy, some of them don't require it at all. So for top surgery, all you needed was one evaluation and you didn't need to be on hormones. I was worried that I was gonna have to identify as transgender male in order to get it. But it turns out you didn't need to be. Identifying as non-binary was perfectly fine. So then there is a therapist for the LGBTQ and she's the one who does the evaluations. The whole purpose of the evaluation is for her to diagnose you with gender dysphoria. Being diagnosed with gender dysphoria allows you to have access to all these surgeries. So I went to my primary care physician I went to my psychiatrist I was referred to the transgender clinic I went to my evaluations I did the orientation eventually I just had to wait for a call from the plastic surgery department so I honestly pro okay I remember this because it was the day before Christmas no yes it was the day before Christmas and I get a call from the plastic surgery department and I was so fucking shocked I was like you weren't supposed to call me for another month, but fucking Merry Christmas, happy birthday to me. She's like, we have an appointment uh, January 14th. I didn't even care what time, like I was like, yes, I will fucking be there. So I go to my consultation and he's like, all right, your boobs are fucking huge. We're gonna have to cut your nipples off, slice right under your pecs, take out the tissue and then re-put your nipples onto you. Like how a male body would have it. And I was like, fucking do it. I would like the soonest appointment, please. And he was like, all right, uh, well, you're gonna have to wait on this fucking waiting list to schedule an appointment. He said, we'll call you in four to six months. And I was like, Phew. like it's January and I have to wait until April to June to get a call to make the appointment that would probably be in another two months. Okay. So I was on the cancellation list. So I get a call March, like 
second. It's a call from the plastic surgery people telling me that there was a cancellation for March 10th. And I was like, I was so surprised. I just said yes. Like I didn't even think of all the shit that I needed to do. Like I didn't even think that I had shifts scheduled. I was still in school. I was so overwhelmed, but it was like the best overwhelming feeling in the world because I finally, like finally, I was a week away from getting like the surgery that I fucking have wanted for so long. Finally, the night before my surgery, there was not one time that I was nervous. I didn't care how I was gonna feel. I didn't care that I may be at risk of losing a nipple. Being able to have like a flat chest under clothing was the thing that I've been wanting for so long. So if all this was fucked up under there, as long as I was able to wear a shirt and be able to have like a flat appearance, fucking great. The morning of the surgery, I wake up at fucking like six o'clock. I had to be there like at seven. I get there and I go into the waiting room for surgery. I get called into the room finally, but by myself. And that's when I get naked. Everyone came into that room to see me except for my fucking plastic surgeon. He was nowhere to be found. I have no idea what he was doing, but doesn't really matter because he did a fantastic job the only time that i remember seeing him was when i was getting wheeled to the room already and i was laying there and he was like are you ready to do this and i was like don't mess up i come back four hours later and i'm literally like sitting there and i'm like before the surgery i had so much color in me like i had so much glow i'll show you a picture and then after the surgery like <laughs> I looked so pale. I literally looked so white and I was just laying there like I couldn't relax my shoulders because like all that skin was just cut off and then pff, there was no pain. I felt no pain in that time, like no pain at all. The doctor told me that it went great and that you look good and you're gonna be fine. There was no complications. That was the actual surgery part. I end up being cleared to go home. Like I had this binder thing, like just like a, like a cloth thing with Velcro. So you literally just wrap it around yourself and it like sticks onto each other. And under there, like there were so many pads. There were little tubies, like there were little two. Okay, so these holes right here, like these thicker holes at the end, you see? Those were the holes for your drains. All of top surgeries come in drains because it needs to take out all the blood that is still stuck in there. I had these drains just hanging down from there. I'll put a picture. There are bulbs of blood so it looked like this like having foreign tube inside your body and just hanging down like that crazy i had to drain them every eight hours and my girlfriend did really great about that she took care of me and drained them for me because i couldn't even keep myself straight like when i walked around like i was hold my chest i was literally hunched like so far i felt so tight right here that i felt like i was just gonna rip my fucking stitches open and i wasn't allowed to move my arms so much they had to stay like literally like to my side and no higher than like this. So post-op, I was actually in a lot of pain. It wasn't like a lot, like I regret this surgery. It was tolerable pain for sure. Like it was just, it was more just discomfort. The fact that like you can't move your arms and when you sleep, you have no idea how much you move until you wanna move when you're sleeping and you literally can't. For the first week, I took my pain meds to like the schedule because if I would miss a dose, I would feel pain. It was more like throbbing pain. A week later, so my first appointment post-op, that's when I got my tubes taken out and that was the first time that I was able to see my chest and it was fucking crazy. Oh my God, like I wasn't able to take off my bandages or anything for that whole week. I got all my bandages off except for the ones that were on my cuts because they were like the sterile strips that were on there and they would fall off as the cut heals. When I am able to see my bare chest with no gauze or anything on it, I literally can see my heart beating. It literally was like going up, like as my heart's beating. There's no breast tissue under that my heart is able to literally push up my skin. So I was tripping out. I literally was like, wait, what the? So I finally have my tubes taken out. The only thing that I need to do is just wear my binder to keep the compression because the point of the binder is to keep tight pressure on your chest so it can reduce the swelling. Honestly, like the first time you see it, it's probably gonna look a little bad. It's not gonna look right yet. Like it, honestly, like the first time you see it, it's not supposed to look right yet. So you're gonna have like a lot of bruising. Like I had a lot of bruising and the tape irritated like my skin. So when I show you the pictures, you'll see like one side of like my um, chest. I was allergic to the tape that was had on there. So my skin was really irritated. When you see my nipples, like they're gonna look really dark. They're literally like stitches all around my nipples. And it was just like a crusty little raisin fucking glued onto your chest. And I was really swollen, honestly. One side of my chest was super swollen and I had a lot of bruising below my incision. It literally went all the way to the top. Like I had like this C-shaped bruise. This side was pretty good. Like it, it was bruised, but it wasn't as much as this side. It felt like this side had like got 
punched by the doctor. He told me that for the first two weeks, do not lift up your arms. Do very, very light activity. You can't raise your heart rate because it'll raise your blood pressure and you can risk getting a hematoma, which is pretty much just a blood collection. By the appointment that I had for a month, I was able to like raise them enough, like probably raise them up to like right here. I was like taking my own shirt off. I was pulling my own pants down. I know that you weren't supposed to be like raising them that high for the risk of stretching out your scars. I'm gonna take my shirt off after and you'll see like what it looks like right now. Within like the scar, there'll be like spots of circles, but that's because I just recently got um, steroids injected into my scars to make them lighter. My nipples aren't completely like circular and perfectly round because that's kind of impossible. Oh yeah, you'll also see on this side, I have a twisted rib. So some people have it like you don't get it from top surgery. It's just something that you're born with. Pretty much like a raised rib. I'll show you like it's like a bump and it's literally just a bone. Like it's rib that's just twisted and it's up. There's nothing I can do about it. I was just born with it. I think I look fine either way. He was like, you can do anything now. Like you can literally no restrictions. But I personally felt like I couldn't do much because I still felt sore. I took a total of five weeks off from work. So after five weeks, I felt like I was like pretty good. By the time of a month and a half, probably like almost eight weeks, I was able to raise my arms up and not feel like I was gonna rip anything. Uh, one thing that he does tell you to do is to constantly massage it because you could get really stiff scarring. So that's very important to do. I use some like ointments. Definitely by three months for sure was when I started like trying to see if I was able to uh, do push-ups. I always wanted to have like juicy fucking chest muscles. Every day I would do 50 push-ups. All I was able to do was do push-ups and buy weights. And I think it did pretty good because like I do have muscles. Like I do when I'm able, when I flex them, like I do see them like juice up and shit. That's pretty much the whole entire journey. The most critical parts of this whole entire thing. October 10th will be my uh, seventh month post-op. So so I'll show you. I'll show you my chest. So this is pretty much what my chest looks like. Up close, the scarring is pretty small. Like the spots that have like the little bit wider purplish looking things, that's where I got the steroid shots, which was for the purpose of making my scars lighter. And you can see that my nipples do have like scarring around it. Uh, they do feel like nipples. They feel like regular nipples, but I have like zero feeling in them, like none at all. This side, pretty much the same. That's where the tubes were. The same goes for this one with the steroid shots that are in there. This nipple kind of got like a weird looking thing going on with it. I honestly don't mind because I can't expect them to be perfectly shaped nipples. This is where I have like the rib. So my rib pretty much goes from all the way right here into right here. And that's where my raised rib is. Like if I were wearing like a really tight shirt and like I like really pressed it down, you'd be able to see because it kind of causes like a little dip right here it doesn't feel like there's muscle. There's like a weird thing going on with them, like almost like there is no pec muscle or like my pec muscle does not do anything here. He says that he can either inject some filler into there to like prevent it from dipping down so much or he can probably go back in there and maybe see what's wrong. That is something that I will be get checked on December 16th. That is my next appointment, which I will definitely tell you guys about. If you guys wanted to know helpful tips or like important things to know when you're post-op and maybe I can make a video on some like helpful things that really helped me when I was recovering, let me know in the comments below. Thank you for watching, honestly. And I hope this was helpful. I post videos every Friday. Sometimes I will be posting two videos. I really appreciate if you guys subscribe because I have a lot of good content coming and I hope that you guys will stick around to see it. I would super appreciate it if you guys share this video with anyone that you think would benefit from seeing this. I hope you guys have an amazing day. Bye.